Hi everyone. In this video I wanted to demonstrate a fairly simple and hopefully painless approach to computing various effect size measures for the predictors in a binary logistic regression analysis. Now the fact is is that uh, the defaults in many uh, statistical packages only generate the unstandardized regression slope and the odds ratios for your predictor variables and those are still effect size measures um, however they are scale dependent in other words they're dependent on the scales of measurement associated with your predictor variables so that creates problems when it comes to uh, making judgments about the relative influence of the predictors in your regression model so the focus in this uh, video is on generating more scale free um, indices of effect size that will allow you to assess the relative contributions of the predictors in your model. So the demonstration that I'm going to be uh, going through uh, is going to be carried out using SPSS version 27 and also an Excel spreadsheet that I put together that will uh, quickly uh, compute the effect size measures um, that you might find of interest. So you can obtain a copy of the SPSS data file that I'm working from uh, by following the link that's provided underneath the video description. And you can also obtain a copy of the Excel spreadsheet by following another link under the video description. So you can download both of those to follow along. And basically what we're going to be doing throughout this demonstration is running our analysis, generating various outputs, and those outputs are going to be used um, as inputs into the Excel spreadsheet. And just briefly, just to give you a visualization of that spreadsheet, this is what it looks like. So you'll see that uh, everything in yellow, these are uh, cells that you can modify in some way. So you'll notice that uh, you can put your variable names uh, right uh, in this column uh, here. The unstandardized regression slopes from your logistic regression right here the standard deviations for the predictor variables right here. We also have a cell up here which is representing the correlation between predicted group membership and actual group membership on your uh, in terms of your binary outcome variable and then over here uh, we have the standard deviation of predicted logits. So the thing is is that when we run our analysis we're not only going to be uh, uh, using the unstandardized regression slopes we're going to be needing to generate the standard deviations for our predictor variables and the predicted logits and then also computing the correlation between predicted and actual group memberships uh, with respect to our, our dependent variable. Now I do want to mention too that everything in yellow as I said before is you can modify but the, the uh, spreadsheet is password protected to ensure that you don't end up overriding the computations but uh, you can see right here that all of these columns represent various effect size measures. So you can see that we have a couple of versions of the odds ratio, we have percentage change in the odds ratios and then we have a set of standardized regression coefficients that are computed using various formulas and all of those are described in terms of what they are uh, down below so if you follow uh, if you kind of scroll down in the spreadsheet you'll see that there uh, there's a description of the each of these effect size measures and what they mean so I'm not going to go through all those but uh, the nice thing about having different ways or different effect size measures is that they can kind of, kind of provide different lenses for talking about the uh, effects in your regression model so let's go ahead and go back to SPSS and run our analysis and uh, basically what we have here is student data so each row in the data set represents a fictional student and what we're, what we're going to be doing is predicting the probability of a student passing a test based on a set of three predictor variables so this pass variable right here is a binary outcome it's coded zero indicating that a student did not pass the test or one indicating that the student did pass the test the predictor variables in the, the uh, analysis are anxiety, mastery goals, and interest. And we could theoretically include a binary predictor. That would be okay as well. But we're just going to stick with these three continuous predictors right here. Okay, so what we'll do now is run our analysis by going to Analyze, Regression, Binary Logistic. And I'm going to reset this. And I'm going to move our predictor variables over to this box right here and we're going to move our dependent variable pass to the dependent variable box. We'll click on save 
and click on predicted values probability. So we're going to be saving the predicted probabilities for the students where the predicted probability for a given student is the probability of the student passing uh, the test based on our regression model. Uh, so we'll click on continue and then click on OK and so now you can see that we get our, our basic regression output and I'm not going to go into covering every aspect of this output just because I've covered this in other videos I'll be sure to include a link to another video under the video description but what we're going to be using are the unstandardized regression slopes that are given in this B column right here so we're going to be using the slope for anxiety mastery goals and interest right there so let me uh, pause this video for a second and we'll input that information into the spreadsheet. Okay, so now I've entered those values. These are our regression slopes. And just briefly, what the values that were in there before, those were default values. Those are uh, values that are coming from Menard's 2011 article uh, in Table 1. So uh, those are just, again, some defaults. So I've just uh, erased all that information and put in our regression slopes for our three predictors. So next what we'll do is to go back into our spreadsheet right here and you can see uh, really quickly here um, that we have the predicted probabilities for uh, group membership in terms of the target uh, outcome which is passing the test so you can see that the first student right here the predicted probability was 0.29 basically that student had about a 29 percent probability of passing the test uh, based on their um, scores on their predictor variables you can see that this third student right here has a predicted probability of 0.56 or basically a 56 percent probability of passing the test so we have one piece of information that we need uh, uh, that we can generate outputs from to include in our Excel spreadsheet. Another variable though that we're going to need to include are the predicted logits for our, um, our students. So to generate the predicted logits we're going to use the transform uh, button right here. Go to compute variable and I'm going to reset this and for the target variable I'm going to type in PR uh, logits right here so just this is just a name that I'm just arbitrarily giving this is for predicted logits and to compute the predicted logits we're gonna go under numeric expression we'll type in LN and inside the parenthesis right here I'm gonna uh, put the uh, name of this variable PRE underscore one then backslash to represent division by and then a new parenthesis will type in 1 minus the uh, predicted probability. So again, that's going to be 1 minus the PRE underscore 1. We'll type in an end parenthesis, end parenthesis right here to close this out, and then we'll type in another end parenthesis to close out uh, this portion of our expression. So looking at this, you may be wondering what the heck a logit is and why, uh, you know, why are we talking about predicted probabilities right here. And the reason why is that when you are performing a logistic regression, um, the, predict the relationship between the predictor variables and the predicted probabilities is inherently nonlinear. So we have to linearize that relationship through a transformation of our predicted probabilities uh, into a new variable that's called a logit. So the unstandardized regression slopes in the context of a binary logistic regression are basically represent the predicted change in logits per unit increase on the predictor variable. So you'll notice that uh, when we take the predicted probabilities uh, of the uh, target outcome, in this case passing the test, and dividing it by uh, the predicted probabilities of not passing the test, that forms an odds ratio and the logits um, are computed by taking the natural log of the odds and that's basically what uh, we are representing in that numeric expression. So I'll click on OK and now we have our new variable representing the predicted logits. So at this point uh, the next piece of information that I want to include in my Excel spreadsheet is the correlation between the predicted group memberships and actual group memberships uh, with respect to the dependent variables. So we're going to click on Analyze correlate and bivariate right here. We're going to move the past variable over to the variables box and we're going to move the predicted probability variable over to this box as well. Click on OK and you'll see that now we get the predicted probability which is uh, the correlation between the predicted group membership 
uh, or predicted probability of uh, being in the target group and the actual uh, pass variable being 0.287. So we're going to be using that information uh, in our Excel spreadsheet. So I'll quickly go to the Excel spreadsheet and we'll type that in. So up here uh, in this cell right here we'll type in 0.297. So that's our uh, th that correlation we just generated, or actually, excuse me, it was 0.287. So 0.287. Okay, so there's our correlation. So the only things that are remaining in terms of what we need to input are the standard deviations for our predictor variables and the standard deviation for the predicted logits. So to accomplish that, all we need to do is to go to Analyze Descriptive Statistics, and we can click on Descriptives right here, and we'll move our predictor variables over to this box, and we'll scroll down and we'll click on Predicted Logits, and we'll move that over here as well. And by default, you can see that Standard Deviation is clicked, so now when we run our analysis, we get the Standard Deviations for our, uh, our predictor variables. These are uh, those values and then the standard deviation for the predicted logits. So I'm going to pause the video and type those values in to our Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so now I've typed in those values. So you can see right here I now have the standard deviations that are given for our predictor variables and scrolling over a little bit further in our uh, spreadsheet you can see that now I've typed in the standard deviation of those predicted logits. So looking at our table right here you can see again this is our column of odds ratios and basically the relationship between the odds ratio and the uh, unstandardized regression slope is as follows. Basically if we just take the uh, natural log of the odds ratio that gets us our uh, unstandardized regression slope. This column right here is representing the odds ratio um, or odds ratios but uh, basically reflecting the predicted change in the odds ratio per standard deviation increase on the predictor. So remember what I said before that uh, with respect to the unstandardized regression slope and the odds ratios those are reflecting uh, the predicted changes on, in terms of the um, in terms of our logits or odds ratios based on the predicted uh, raw score change on the predictor variable. So both of those indices are uh, dependent on the scales of measurement of your predictor variables. So again, that creates problems when it comes to uh, making uh, judgments concerning the relative importance or relative uh, influence of the predictors in your model. So the odds ratio, the odds ratios in this column allows you to better uh, talk about the relative contributions of the predictors in our model. So you can see right here that uh, the interest, uh, that the mastery predictor has the largest um, sort of partial, partially standardized odds ratio, followed by the interest predictor, followed by the anxiety predictor. You'll notice in this column right here we have our percentage change in the odds ratios. These were computed using the values in this column. And so this is the percentage change uh, in the odds ratio uh, per uh, raw score unit increase on the predictor. So that, again, creates some problems in terms of assessing the relative contributions of the predictors in our models. Uh, so we can use this uh, percentage change right here. This is uh, linked up with the odds ratios in this column. So that's giving you the percentage changes. And both of these percentage changes that you see right here, positive values mean that uh, with increasing uh, values on our predictor variable, the percentage, uh, the percentage change represents the percentage increase in the odds ratio. And negative values would reflect uh, the notion that with increasing values on the predictor that the uh, percentage change in the odds ratio uh, basically is reflecting the percentage decrease or decay in the odds ratio with increases on our predictor. Uh, these columns over here are reflecting our different uh, effect size measures uh, with respect to uh, standardized regression coefficients. So the values in uh, column A right here, these are partially standardized regression slopes. Basically, they are just computed by taking the, the unstandardized slope and multiplying by the standard deviations of the predictor variables. And you could easily generate these if you were running your regression analysis just by standardizing the predictor variables basically converting them to uh, into uh, z-scored variables and then entering those into the predict the uh, prediction model then the unstandardized regression slope would actually contain these values right here but uh, the others you can't really do that with um, I do want to draw your attention to 
uh, these uh, coefficients right here. These are uh, fully standardized regression slopes based on uh, Menard's formula. But, uh, you know, basically when it comes to uh, looking at these different versions of uh, regression slopes, all of them would give you a sense of the relative influence of the predictors in your model. So as I scroll down here, I just, I just want to, um, you know, note uh, that, again, you, you've got basically uh, so, some description of these different indices that I've provided. So that if you want to read up a little bit more and kind of uh, couch your interpretation and how you communicate your results um, a little bit more clearly in terms of what uh, those co the coefficients in this table mean, you can kind of go down here and uh, read a little bit more on that. So that's basically all there is to it uh, in terms of generating various alternative um, measures of effect size for your predictor variables in logistic regression and again uh, you don't have to just simply rely on the unstandardized regression slope or the odds ratio. So that concludes this video presentation and I appreciate you watching.